Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after the break in discussion with Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman with our today's topic, marriage, an important stage. We have been discussing about the concept of marriage in Islam and the traditions between the prophets that were there before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have found out the roles and responsibilities and the importance of marriage in Islam. Sheikh. When we went to the break, just before we went to the break, you did touch upon the social responsibility and the importance of how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demonstrated that he is also a human, a prophet. At the same time, he fulfilled the commitments that he had towards his wife and the responsibility that he has towards his wife. Now, one of the concepts that we see, or sometimes we understand that we get sometimes so much carried away in act of ibadah that we neglect the importance or the um, the commitment towards not mm. only our spouses, mm. towards our children as well. Yep. Now, what did Rasul, how did Rasulullah balance this, the ibadah, and at the same time the commitment towards his children and his spouse? You see, like when we was talking about the hadith earlier, so we say like when he said like you know, wa wa so mm. when he said like I fast some days and I break my fast some days. I pray some portions of the night and I sleep during some po- some other portions of the night and he said I get married. So all those things that prove that Islam is, is, is a balanced religion and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he managed to give the due rights of everyone accordingly. And just to clarify, mm. because the term that we use, balanced religion, when we say balanced mm. religion, wh- what's the main definition of balance? Um, meaning that um, uh, when I when I said balance in this in this context, I meant that there are religions which is to prohibit the marriage. Mm. They used to see the marriage as as as, as something, uh, you know, uh, going away or staying away from or taking someone from, away from the faith, faith or from the remembrance of Allah the, or, or from the worship of Allah the Almighty. Um, one of the problems that in our society we see that the expense of the marriage. Now, that, mm. b- before we move on to the expenses, there's another thing I wanted to touch upon. Now, we did, uh, um, you did mention about a hadith that said the youth, mm-hmm. um, the Prophet have encouraged mm-hmm. our youth to get married as early as possible. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we see in today's world, that there is a delay. Mm-hmm. A, it could be an affordability, but then again, there is also another thing that is a biggest challenge. The things that are easily accessible and available before marriage. Mm-hmm. So the actual sanctity or actual concept that is there within the marriage is lost. Mm-hmm. Now, how do we battle this challenge? So, um, uh, you see, you mean like the, we, we look at the materialistic world? Not only the materialistic mm-hmm. world, but did Rasulullah not say that let's make the marriage it's easy exactly. and make the fornication see, see harder? The, yes. Whereas the society that we live in today is right. completely the other way around. That's right. I mean, uh, uh, one of the problems with the marriage in the, across the world, and especially in the Muslim world, we see is that the marriage has been made very difficult. It made too complicated, too complex. Our youngsters, our youth, they cannot really get married. Um, uh, the issue of expense, the issue of, uh, you know, uh, the, the cultural sensitivities, um, the issue of uh, the, the the money and, you know. Or even just to add, yeah. the issue of I have older siblings ahead of me. So yeah. how can I get married yes, being yes. young, even so, though I have found a match? Yes, yes. So so there are so many barriers. Uh, although Islam, some of them are not actually fully supported by Islam. Although we have some discipline and system, that's okay. But... Uh, Marriage generally should be and must be actually made affordable and easy. And that's the teaching of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? So that a person can save himself <coughs> from committing any sins or falling into sins and, and, and probably in a, in a relationship to which Allah and, and His Messenger, peace be upon him, do not want. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith recorded in, in the hadith of Imam Ahmad and, uh, and, and Hakim, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أعظم النساء بركة أيسرهن مؤنة. Listen to this hadith very carefully, uh, respected viewers. The Prophet said, أعظم النساء بركة أيسرهن مؤنة. So he said, the most blessed marriage, or most uh, 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 great, or the most uh, 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 blessed marriage, which, which has lots of baraka, is the marriage which has the least expenditures. Least expense. Now we see people, many people in our society, they have to work for maybe decades. Not only that, compete with one another. Yes. That so and so has got married their children. Mahar has to be that much. Some of the uh, some of the parents of 
of, uh, of prides are demanding certain mahar, certain dowry that cannot be afforded by by um, by the would groom, groom. Mm. Um, would be groom, yeah. So we have this kind of thing, and then also people are uh, waiting for years and years so that they can hire certain types of halls, uh, which probably uh, cost ten, fifteen thousand pound. So people are looking, um, you know, and, and searching for the expensive halls, like expensive vehicles, so they can hire, and then they can celebrate their marriage. Um, up to the, or according to the standard of the society. So now Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that marriages should be made easy and affordable. Uh, now how many of us do we actually look into this hadith and do we take this hadith and, and practice and materialize in our society? That's a very, very important question. And I see we can actually judge our Islam. I normally say that we can um, uh, judge and we can see how much Islam do we have when we come to our marriages, when we come to our occasions, so we can see like how much Islam actually we are serious about our religion. Because the amount of things that take place, which is actually against the teaching of the faith or religion. Now, what we also do notice the marriages nowadays, it's more like a cultural or social norm rather than the spiritual element Absolutely to it. Absolutely correct. And that's the reason why you see even people give so less importance to the actual nikah aqad itself. It's all about uh, gaya hulud, it's all about mendi, it's all about all those like you know cultural uh, norms and and and, and customs or traditions, uh, traditions. Mm. Uh, and and when you see the nikah itself it take place it just you get an imam or you get a, a, a maulana uh, or you get a sheikh and you just get the nikah done within five ten minutes and that's it and that's all and then everything else is just a party and and, and celebration which is fine happiness and and expression of happiness is fine in Islam but it should be within the um, instructions and within the guidelines of our Sharia al Islamiyah. Um, as you have mentioned earlier about the issue of similarities, now um, initially a Muslim a male is allowed to get married with a Muslim female. Uh, and at times, uh, uh, yeah. Or, or are you and, and, about other faith? Um, no, I, I mean, like a Muslim male is allowed to get married with a Muslim female initially. Okay. Initially, okay. Um, regardless of the age, regardless of their uh, of the background, with uh, regardless of the ethnicities, they are allowed to get married. But Islam uh, tells us what is better for us. There are some things in Islam is allowed and permissible. But there are other things that what is better for us. So some things are halal and permissible, but other things are, are suggested by Islam. So the fuqaha of Islam, the jurists of Islam, they um, uh, laid down certain rules and regulations when, it come to, when, when we come to get married. So they have a concept called al-kafa'a, which means the similarities in marriage. So similarities in terms of education, similarities in terms of of wealth, similarities in terms of of, 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 of caste, similarities of in terms of uh, similarities in terms of, of of background, all those things um, the scholars of Islam they consider. Mm -hmm. However, they're not something uh, over <coughs> religion. So listen to the uh, just before I can, yes. And a lot of people might have an issue with the term caste because Islam does not believe in the caste system, mm -hmm. even though we have a cultural system which is called maybe a class system or social mm -hmm. status mm -hmm. that's there. But uh, usually, what we call in uh, Bengali zat okay. or, or the family status, or the class, um, yeah, or the class. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, uh, this this must not be make a, a measurement <coughs> of identifying who is who is good and who is bad. That's wrong. But for the for the purpose for identity, we um, we can uh, have this kind of uh, family class. Like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was from Al Qurashi. So they had uh, even at the time Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even at the time of Sahaba, they had the um, the tribes and and clans and people belong to different clans and tribes. That is fine as long as no one thinks that they're superior just because they belong to a clan or a or, or, or a class or, or a zat. You know, we're not allowed to have this faith because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he broke this mentality of, of believing uh, or being proud. Or, or discriminating yeah, fellow discriminating, human beings yes. just because they were yes. born in a different said, sort of family. He said, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. He said, indeed in the sight of Allah, uh, is the, one, uh, the, the best one in the sight of Allah is the one who fears Allah the most. And then he said in a hadith in, in, in Hijjat al-Wida, in the last sermon that he gave before he passed away, in the last pilgrimage in Hajj, he said, 
So he made a very important statement and announcement by calling to the mankind, by saying all mankind, that there is no superiority of Arabs over non-Arabs. And there is no superiority of non-Arabs over Arabs. And there is not any superiority of, of white over black and vice versa, black over white. And then he says finally, Illa bi taqwa, except the taqwa, our conduct, our deeds, our connection with Allah the Almighty. That's what makes us whether we are good or we are bad. So, so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, when we come to get married, tunkahu al-mar'a li arba. We should get married and when we come to um, uh, search for our partners, then we should look into four things. Number one, he says, limaliha, her wealth. Or also he applies for, 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 for the groom as well. So uh, for his or for her wealth. And then he says, well, her family status. So And then he says, well, Then third, he said, uh, uh, for her beauty. Well, her beauty. Both ways. Yeah, both ways, vice versa as well. And then he says, and for his, for her religion or for his religion, the connection, the practice of their faith or religion. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he completes and concludes the hadith by saying, Fadfar bidhati din. Many people they forget this bit. Fadfar bidhati din. Taribat yadak. He says that prioritize the religion. Give the priority to deen. May you be the blessed one. So when they say deen, yadak. it's the code of character, conduct, and how they, how they conduct themselves, what's their character, akhlaq, and all of this taken into, take into account. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely, absolutely correct. So uh, uh, when we look at, when, <coughs> we choose, when we come to search and look for our partners, we see, as Professor Assam instructs, that we look at the, the mal, the obviously wealth, and then we look at also the, the family status, uh, and then we look at the, the beauty. And then the last thing he says, deen. The reason why he mentioned towards the end so that no one forgets, hmm. everyone remembers because this is most important. And then he says, that choose and prioritize faith, religion over all other things, even though you will consider other things, but then should be given the priorities. But in our society today, the mal is given the priorities. Oh, this person is wealthy, millionaire. They have this many, this many businesses, this many properties, you know. So we look at we're looking at, into the materialistic things. Well, well, again, it's they're looking from the perspective of say, for instance, if it's a father of a daughter, they're looking from the concept of securing the future of my daughter because the husband is going. You see, and, uh, normally I say to even like when we conduct marriages, we say that if someone gets married for wealth, then wealth is here today and it may go tomorrow. A person can be bankrupt within within a day. That's true. Uh, if someone gets married for beauty, then beauty can be here and it can go. It's again temporary. Um, if someone gets married for the jobs, profession, uh, even family know, status, family status, these are all temporary. We have seen certain countries in in recent times. They used to boast. They used to, uh, you know, they used to have a lot of pride because of their their the country. And I I don't want to mention that it would be it would be too personal. But I've seen the boasting about the country, but within a few months... The nationalistic approach. Yeah, approach. Mm. The country, the, the status mm -hmm. of the country went down, and nobody, the people have become refugees all over the world. So um, these are all temporary. But if someone gives the priority to the deen, then this eternal, this remains, and this is everlasting. Um, one of the elements that you have touched upon when you look for spouse, mm -hmm. that these are the four qualities that you, mm -hmm. um, that the hadith mentions clearly. Yes. Now the question arises, who looks for the spouse? Because the culture that we mm -hmm. come from, mm -hmm. normally, generally, the families look for a potential yep. match for their yes. children. That's so a good is, question. So is it the husband or the, uh, the, 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 the person in question mm -hmm. uh, should look for those or the family that they're looking for their children should look right. for those? So that's an important qualities. question. And I think this is, this, something, this is something that everyone mm -hmm. should listen very carefully. Um, when we look at our society, we find there are numerous types of marriages. Hmm. Numerous types of marriages, number of types of marriages, namely, th main or, 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 or mainly there are three types. Number one is the love marriage, which is very common in our society now. Twenty first century. Twenty first yeah. twenty first century love marriage. Let's talk about love, love marriage a little bit. And um, so, love marriage is that someone likes somebody, someone loves someone. Um, and it could be, and they could be very immature, like you know, they could be in a very younger age. Um, and when we talk about love, uh, the love is, is is connected with emotion. Now, 
uh, lots of love marriages are actually based upon the emotion. And or the attraction. Uh, or, the, or the attraction, mm. or certain things, bias or imbalance way of, 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 of looking into things. Maybe uh, uh, excessive beauty, or maybe um, maybe like uh, uh, wealth, or maybe like excessive um, uh, the, the talents. So there can be many things, but love is connected, or love marriage is based upon emotion. And now when emotion get involved, a person becomes blind. Someone becomes completely blind. So they do not really look into what is right and wrong. So when we see um, a marriage which is based upon love and emotion, we see people tend to, or the couples, or the, or the, um, the bride, or, or the groom, tend to make certain mistakes. So um, it could be that um, uh, they would uh, go against the will of the parents. I Meaning, don't. like they may not co they consult their parents, they will not consult. Perhaps they will not consult the the close family elders or members. I mean, just to add this bit here. I mean, you're talking from the perspective of having maturity and experience, which the parents have in comparison yeah, yes, to the youth. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, also another bit I have to add there. When you say love marriage, because obviously it's slightly um, uh, incompatible with the Islam, because Islam does Islam encourage the love before marriage, or is it more about meaning, meaning the, love after the marriage? Yes, obviously, the, the, the love, um, the materializing the love, um, someone... Or is it about someone liking might, yeah, someone? Someone might like somebody, mm -hmm. and, and they're preparing to get married, that's okay. okay. But to, to practice that love or, before... Or, or even following the right procedures, maybe yes. going through the parents, yeah. going through the family, yes, going yes. through the parents of the child. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Because many people might get into this confusion that yes. love marriage might yeah. somehow be allowed in, yes, in the yes. fall of Islam. Well, we're trying to say that love marriage, uh, that most likely, uh, or mostly, it, it kind of includes a lot of mistakes. Most important one is that, uh, n like, a lack of pleasure of, of parents. So, meaning that people may uh, avoid parents or, upset the, or, or upset the family mm. members or the elders. Um, it could be also unwise decision. Sometimes people uh, are not thinking correctly because they're in a, in a, in a situation of emotion. And whenever as someone excessively uh, in the emotion of love, they make mistake. Also in the, ex uh, in the emotion of sadness, people make mistake. Also anger. All the emotions excessively, when, when it's done excessively, it can lead to mistakes. Now, some might say, um, just to add and uh, just to have a balance of the discussion, some might say, well, it has worked fine for me. Has been, well, I was being yes, very wise yes, on that. that. So it, we're talking in general. Yes, aren't we? we're not saying that everybody, every love marriage will be a failure or or a mistake or, or can include mistake. Because some of the love marriage, someone may like someone, and then the parents also agree, and they're consulting the parents, which is fine. So so that's okay. If someone likes, and then uh, and then there is also pleasure, or there is also agreements of all the family members, or 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 at least the majority. But also we have to be careful falling into this trap that it is allowed. Yeah. Uh, because we have to be yes, very careful yes. about whether. That it's okay I mean, I wouldn't make any. I wouldn't make any concrete decision to say that whether haram or halal, mm -hmm. but I would say that obviously relationship before marriage is is, uh, is impermissible as far as I know. Haram, you mean? Yes, but uh, marriage based on love, um, I can't make a concrete decision. But what I will say is that it can lead to many mistakes, and it, it does happen. And we see, and even sometimes when people get married emotionally, then they regret a lot in the later stage. In general. You know, in general, yeah. a lot of people make a, a regret, you know, because they, they were unwise, maybe not mature enough. And sometimes people think even when they're in the age of 16, 17, they're, they're very mature, they think. But you see- Hardly when, have they seen the world. Yeah, <laughs> yes. But uh, as we are growing all, we're still becoming mature. And the prophet- and we still make mistakes, even though we're yes. matured. Yes. But it's just, what my understanding is, we have to be conscious about our decisions, yes, yes. about how what we do, yep. and if needed be, we have to consult people who are matured, experienced, are more knowledgeable than us. But because the, the marriage is a lifelong decision. In Islam, when we are getting married, we are actually making a, a decision for the life. Hmm. It's not like one of those things that you buy a car and you can sell it, and you can, you're buying a property, then you can sell it again. It's not one of those things. You're taking a very major decision in your life. You're, you're, you're bringing your partner to your life. So therefore, it should be taken very wisely it must be, uh, people must, um, you know, take a lot of things into consideration and then uh, make, make a firm decision. Then we have another type of marriage after the love marriage. We have another type of marriage which is called forced marriage.
Now, this is very, very common in the Muslim world and in many parts of the world up until today. Not only in the Muslim world, we even find in some non-Muslim societies as well. So, what is forced marriage? So, marrying a child, or marrying a son or a daughter against their will. So, they're not happy, but forcing a marriage upon them. Um, is that something permissible or allowed in Islam? We have to look into that. Now, um, first we look into the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu What did he say about this, this matter of forcing our children, youngsters, or anybody into a marriage? So Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that anna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called that indeed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that لا تنكح الأيم حتى تستأمر that a widow woman, a widow woman shouldn't be married unless she's consulted. A widow woman shouldn't be married. So permission is very important. Unless she's consulted. Widow. We're talking about widow now first. Okay. And then um, Prophet Sallallahu said, وَلَا تُنْكَحْ الْبِكْرْ حَتَّى تُسْتَأْذَنْ And a virgin girl must not be married unless her permission has been taken to stamar so unless she she um, her permission or her agreement is there then sahaba radiyallahu anhum they asked qalu ya rasulullah o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa kayfa idhnuha how is her permission how do we you know because sometimes in our society people have shyness and modesty so some of our our, our, our <laughs> women they they wouldn't they may not say it clearly so then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam idhnuha an taskut if she remains silent if she's silent, then that's a sign of her agreement. Now, you look at this hadith of Prophet ﷺ. He says that a widow or a, or a divorced um, uh, uh, woman should not be married um, without uh, consulting her. And a, 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 a virgin or a, or a girl shouldn't be married, shouldn't be married without um, taking her permission. Um, so... So this is a very, very important hadith, but many of us in our society, we have this tendency of forcing a marriage on somebody. Now, imagine like you are forcing somebody into a contract in a relationship, which is, um, which is a lifelong relationship. How can you do that? Does that make even sense? Like when we use our rational, when we use our, our aql, does it make sense that you know you bring somebody into someone else's life and they have to be there forever? Uh, I mean, uh, 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 as long as they're in this world. And obviously that will involve a lot of things, um, children, uh, social life, and, and so many other different aspects of life. So um, in my opinion, that it doesn't make sense. So as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that he was right. That, uh, Islam does not encourage any sort of forced marriages yeah, either. Ex not exactly. only it's a criminal offense in this yeah. country, but Islam in the first place does not yes. allow forced yes, marriages yes. to take place. And the last one, the, the last type of marriage and which... which um, Many of us will agree, or many of us will agree that this is the most wise type of marriage, and that is the arranged marriage. So now, what do we understand by arranged marriage? Arranged marriage is that maybe a, 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 a person, a, a groom, may find a bride. A brother can may, may find a sister. But he goes through his parents, and he speaks to his parents. Uh, or, or maybe a sister may, may find a brother. Uh, a, a bride can, may find a groom and then she goes through her family or it could be that a father finds um, a, a partner for his uh, daughter or find a partner for his for his son with the permission then, of the with, children and then and then they console they sit down they discuss they um, they 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 they, uh, they have uh, a proper shura mashura amongst themselves and then they look into the positive and negative, and then there's pleasure of parents, there's respect of parents, and at the same time, the parents are also doing their best to find the most suitable uh, partners for the children. One thing I must say, and this is a message for, for the children, that the parents always want the best for the children. They would never want something bad for the children. And they're the best, uh, most beloved people in this world. So parents always look for the best partners. Sometimes we do not realize that. But at the same time, um, we need to respect the views of the children as well uh, when they're getting married because it is their lifelong issue. So I think um, that could be most suitable. And if anyone can do that, then they should take this, the matter to, through this route, the arrange or the 
agreements of, of almost the, most of the family members, parents, children, wives, husband, all the members of the family. And, and last thing I want to mention is that our marriages must be made easy. We should make our marriages affordable and easy. Our marriages must be made easy. Our marriages must be made easy. Our marriages must be made easy. And we should find the partners in advance. Search for the partners, suitable partners in advance. Otherwise, Not to delay the suitable marriage. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be too late mm -hmm. because they may start looking for their own partners. And that's what, that's what happened. Our uh, Bangladeshi Muslim man did a concept that the Trishbutsar na hale biya shadi korte bar mena, pochishbutsar na hale biya shadi korte bar mena. Eirukum kono kisu Islam er mudde nae. Amra dekha sije Rasul Ekrem sam balachen. Ya ma ashar shab man istata amin kumul baata fali tazawaj. So there is not any age limit um, in 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 our faith, in our religion when it comes to marriage. As long as they are ready to get married and they can afford, they should be um, allowed to get married. So our parents. Uh, you know, for the sake of Allah, they should make the marriage easy for the children. Jazakallah khair with this uh, fine timing, with this we end our today's program. We don't have any more time. There was a lot of more questions I wanted to ask regarding the marriage issue. But inshallah, one maybe of our next episode, inshallah, inshallah, one of the next episodes we'll continue our discussion with this. Thank you very much for being here so late again, once again in the studio. Lana wa lakum. May Allah accept, inshallah. My dear viewers, with this we have come to the conclusion of, tonight, our, of our tonight's program. One of the key messages that we have found from our discussion today is Parents will never want or wish bad for their children. They would always want the best for their children. And as youngsters and as people who are fortunate enough to have parents, let us not underestimate their guidance, their experience, their knowledge. Because one day when we lose them permanently, we might realize how important we're there in our life. And in this fast-paced world that we live in, where both the parents are occupied with their own challenges, with their own betterment of their life, we are unfortunately, unintentionally neglecting the importance of our children, neglecting the tarbiyah of our children, neglecting giving them the valuable time. Let us think about it. Let us take a step behind and see how much do we need to do for this world and how much do we need to create a future generation that will live to propagate the deen of Islam, inshallah. And whatever we have said, it's just a normal discussion. It's just a general discussion. There is, it's not a specific to any individual, to any community, to any society. May Allah give us barakah in our marriages. And one more fundamental um, important fact before I finish, it is that those of our children, those of our youngsters who are getting married, as parents, let us ensure that we do not indulge in their personal matter. We do, we do not become a responsible, we do not become responsible for breaking their marriage or failing their marriages. Inshallah, this is for me and for our community for our society we take a lesson from it that we need to not only make our youngsters our youth marriages successful but also need to ensure that how can they create a better future generation thank you very much for being us here for watching us live from wherever you're watching and inshallah we'll continue our discussion in our next episode on the same day same time with another different new topic till we meet again subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sakallah shaykh for your time sakallah